So what do, what do you uh, what do you think so far? It's great. This is fun. Cool. So so this is um, really psyched to be sitting with Alex. Um, been uh, a, a fan of, of his work from from back in the days of dodgeball, and uh, obviously followed Foursquare sort of rose uh, uh, through New York. And and recently, the reason I wanted to, to have Alex come tonight and talk is recently, I think everyone knows Foursquare sort of went through a big redesign, and uh, would love to have you just talk a little bit about that, you know, what is, what is the product today? And sort of how do you guys talk about it? The press obviously had their opinions of sort of interpreting the product and what that meant about where the business is going and, and sort of where it had been and whether it was working or not. But we'd love to get just your thoughts on kind of what are the key things about the new product and, uh, and why are you proud of it? Sure. Um, so yeah, so there's a, there's a lot we can talk about both in terms of the product and the process of getting the product to where it is now. Um, so back, back in December, we decided that, I mean, for, we had launched Explore uh, earlier, earlier that year, and we knew that we wanted Foursquare to be the best way to connect people to places and places to people. And historically, before um, the, new, the new redesign, the app was very much optimized for check-ins and badges and mayorships, and we knew that there was a lot m more content flowing throughout the Foursquare ecosystem that the app wasn't really surfacing to people. And so what we set out to do was to reimagine the experience in a way that reflected the, that kind of, a, a much richer consumption experience around content and places. That makes sense. So most, you know, we, we, uh, we invest super early. And one of the things we see a lot is, is companies that pivot. Uh, people make a big deal when a company pivots successfully. But usually, you're pivoting from uh, failure, or at least you can see over the cliff. Right. right. And, uh, and you guys were absolutely not in that position in terms of usage, in terms of engagement, in terms of passion of your users, and, and also in terms of your team sort of feeling like you were moving ahead with the product and continuing to, to go down a, a roadmap that people were, were sort of bought into. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I imagine that the, the redesign process, or at least that decision process, was both interesting and painful. And, uh, and I'd love to get you to sort of talk through the what factors in the, in the ecosystem kind of, or in user behavior made you decide that now was the time? And sure. then also kind of those early conversations internally uh, and, and sort of how those conversations evolved to the decision to, to go ahead and, and sort of rip and replace. Sure, um, so for the first couple of years of Foursquare, uh, we, our product development process was very much just hustle and ship as much product as we possibly can. And I, and I think that ended up with us launching a bunch of different features. Um, but a lot of them, we, we would get to the point that they were 80% done and we would push them out and we would rather get them out and get them in people's hands and uh, learn from that and then continue building from there. But what happens is we ended up last fall with a great collection of features, but the experiences that those features enabled started to, the collective weight of these 80% done things started to drag down the overall experience. And so we wanted to take some time to think with all the stuff that now you can do on Foursquare, if you were to take it apart and put it back together, how could you, what would that, what would that look like? And so some of the big things that were part of the redesign was we moved the check-in button up to the top right, which some people interpreted as Foursquare doesn't care about check-ins anymore. And it's like, we'll, we'll, always, we'll always care about check-ins, we'll always care about social signal. Check-ins has always been the primary social signal for us, but that doesn't mean that it's only gonna be, only gonna be check-ins forevermore. Um, but the way that the app is now organized along the bottom where you have activity from your friends, explore, and then me, in a lot of ways really mirror our core use cases, which is the social use case, the discovery use case, and the personal history use case. Um, the, what, what we launched with the redesign was very much the beginning of what we want to do and, and I mean the process of getting there took longer than we wanted it to and it was, it was a tough process for the organization to get through but it was very much wanting to get each of those tabs to a place that we could build all the things that we want to build for the next three years and, in, and we're, uh, we'll probably talk about this later on but some of the stuff that we learned about how we got there was how can we change our product development process so that we don't have we don't get stuck behind this giant monolithic release that I mean initially when we set off on the redesign we we're like oh this will take three months and then once we got into it it was like four months and five months and six months um, and so one of the big takeaways that we got from that was 
how do we approach the problems that we're trying to solve so that they're smaller chunks and more frequent releases and more, more iterative, iterative releases. So since we launched the redesign, we've gotten better at like every two weeks, we'll push a new release and we'll, we'll make something in the app better. Um, so. And, and was, there, was there someone or, or a group of people who sort of stood up and raised their hand and said, it's time to reevaluate? Was that you and Dennis and, and Harry? Or was time it to reevaluate the app or the yeah, process. Sort of who noticed the 80% and kind of said, look, it's just this. I think every, everyone, I mean, we probably use the app more than anyone else. And I think everyone felt it. So it was, it was something that, like, it's, it start, it's hard when, when you're working at a startup, you're always doing more than you have the resources to do. And so to be able to step back and try and evaluate things from a higher level is a hard thing to do. And so we, we tried to set up a process to let people in the organization step back and do that. Um, I don't think it was perfect. I think we learned a lot from it, and I think we'll do it better next time. But yeah. yeah and what, so what is that process? And, and sort of maybe talking a little bit about how, how it was when you were pushing kind of the, the monolithic releases, and now kind of how you think about you know, people being able to surface a great idea and have that push up through the organization and ultimately out into, right. into the user's hands. Um, OK. So, when, so last December, when we first started talking about the redesign, I think we were about 80 people. And I remember talking to Harry and Dennis and and Evan, part of the management team, and we were like, we're getting pretty big now, we should, we should start thinking about how we could break up into smaller teams to keep, keep the, the, the pace of what we're doing in like that, that sm like smaller creative environment. And we were like, okay, we'll do it, we'll do it after the redesign. Thinking it'll be like, oh, it'll be three months and we'll do it and it'll be fine. Um, the three months turned to six months, and by the time that was over, it was like, holy shit, we've got 120 people. And the process that we went through to get there was painful for a lot of us. Um, and and we knew that we had to come out of that and make changes with how we make things. So one of the, one of the big things that we've done was rather than have giant teams working on giant projects, we've tried to break the company up into what we call focus areas, but really it's what do we as a company think are priorities for us. And so that for us, they're things like, like internally we call them like content consumption, content creation, explore, monetization like these are all the all the things that are important to us as a company and what we the goal with that was to try and staff those so that they had enough people to sh ship stuff on their own uh, rather than get into a situation that we were in before where the person who's working on lists is also working on explore is also working on photos so only one of them is going to move forward at any time and everyone just gets frustrated because the other ones aren't moving forward and so we wanted to try and set up the organization in such a way where people war had the space and the ability to focus on certain problem sets and work with a certain group of people to like get to know the cadence of the people that they're trying to solve problems with. Um, so we came out of the redesign, broke up into those smaller teams, and now empowering those teams to solve the, those problems so related to whether it's monetization or content creation, like how do we get more people checking in or more people writing tips. Um, and so we, shi we shifted to this model with smaller teams and then now we let, we give the problem to the teams and then the teams can come back with those solutions and we sort of go in bi-weekly cycles where the team will come and meet with Dennis and Harry and Ian who's our design director and I and we'll go through like here's the stuff that we're working on, here, here are the numbers that we think it's going to affect, um, here's what we did last week. And that's the, like the checks and balances, but we wanted to, to shift the organization to a place where people were empowered to own the solutions to the problems that they were solving. And have you also found ways to have them own the feedback that comes back from the market? So it's, it's one thing to sort of feel like I can come up with an idea, I can build that idea and I can push it out, uh, I can work with you know, the, the founders, make sure it's mission aligned, but it's another thing to sort of get that you know, this was what I, this was my hypothesis, and this was the data that came back, and now I can iterate right. all within that group. Yeah. So what we've done, I mean, with the with with the redesign, we have an app that's instrumented in a way that nothing we had before was. So we can learn so much more about how people are interacting with the app, what's working, what's not working, um, and one of the things that we did there there are a few groups that cut across focus areas, but one of them is the marketing an analytics team that dive into those numbers and so there's a representative from that team on each of the focus areas so they work with the focus areas to figure out like okay for content consumption we should be tracking what are the in the act 
like in the fee friend feed, the left hand most tab, what are the cards that people are clicking on the most? And so we built the, the infrastructure for that tab so that we can try different things and we can try a card that we treat differently and see how, what kind of action that gets. Or we can try, try a totally new card that reminds you that you have outstanding friend requests. And then we can see like, oh, is that, is that working to get people to go like close that loop with those, with those friends? Um, so yeah, so we've, since the redesign and since having a, a much better instrumented app where we're able to make much better data-informed decisions, not like the whole distinction between data-driven and data-informed, like there's what we can get from those numbers and then, I mean, when we push something out, like you can hear from people on Twitter, you hear for like, there are a lot of different places where we can get qualitative as well as the quantitative data. I mean, we're, we're looking to hire UX researchers, like we want to be able to make that more of our core process. Um, but and, and you guys as a, as a team, are, what is the ratio of, of engineers to, to designers in terms of sort of the, the traditional kind of thought that engineers tend to be a little more kind of, you know, the fuck it, ship it, and fix it later, and designers tend to be a little more in the camp of, you know, get it as right as you can, and then, you know, get feedback. Right. And you guys have sort of, we, we talked before about you finding the cadence between those two things, or the yes. balance between those two, but just yeah. as a ratio, like, where are you on the, on the um, We're about 80 engineers to 10 designers. Okay. Um, and that's, that's design, that's UX, visual design. Um, and we've, I mean, we've always been tight on the design side of resources that I think we, I mean, we could definitely benefit to, to, bring, to bring on more people. But we're, now that we've gotten into this two week cycle and one of the, one of the things that um, Anoop, who's our iOS lead who's here in the crowd, like has helped drive for us is like we've moved to this train leaving the station model for our app releases where it's like every two weeks we're gonna get we're gonna submit something to the app store and the stuff that's ready to go will get on that train and if it doesn't go there'll be another train two weeks later and not not to get it like I, I joked about like the redesign turned into like the Katamari Damashi of features where it was like we bring up a new thing it's like we'll do it with the redesign and then everything just gets like glommed onto this giant ball and then you're just waiting for this thing to be birthed um, <laughs> But now, but now it's and now that we finally ha we have like three or four under our belt now, and it, I think it took a while for the organization to trust that it's like, well, if I don't insist that it get in on this release, it'll never happen. And it's like now we know, like it'll happen. It'll happen two weeks later. It'll go out. And I think we're we're starting to get to a, a nice variety of like small changes and bigger stuff. Like this week, we we redid the explore tab and how it, the core interaction of the explore tab. And that that like that's something that we've been wanting to do since we launched the redesign. And we like. But we've had to pick our battles along the way and figure out the things that we want to get out in each of those two-week cycles. And have you found that that has helped you move through your product roadmap faster, or has it actually has it changed the product roadmap that, that you guys are setting out? Uh, so as part of the moving to the focus area process, um, we've also shifted a bit the way that we that we approach the roadmap and and. We've empowered the teams to come back with the things that they think are most important to solve the problems that we outline that we're trying that we want to have solved. Uh, so I think it's tough. Like we we're still trying to find the balance between those two week iterations, which I think are really important. I think it's important for the organization and the the people building things to f see people outside in the real world playing with them and like giving feedback on them. And so. Like when we have a big launch, everyone gets really excited and I think what we want to do is try and get, capture like a piece of that moment and have that happen every two weeks where something new gets out there and users have a new reaction to it. Um, I don't think we've found the, I think the biggest challenge is how do you, and especially I think on the design side, like how do you design in two week iterations and keep that going, but still have enough space like emotionally and mentally and just like pure bandwidth wise to be able to step back and think like what should what should the product look like three months from now what should the product look like six months from now and I think that particularly at startups where it's like th there's a constant sense of like there are 12 holes in this boat and I have 10 fingers <laughs> and I'm going to just keep on trying trying to plug as many holes as I can um, and I think what's great is we're getting to the point where we're growing the design team we, we hired a design director who's been great at bringing a little rigor and methodology to our design process. Um, so we're getting, like, we're, we're getting there. 
Nice. So uh, you have a, um, a room full of designers, hopefully some from agencies that startups in New I'll York. I'll be in the could, back could taking resumes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, maybe maybe just as a last as a last question, just talk a little bit about uh, you know what what you guys look for when when someone comes in for a design role. Um, uh, I guess one of the big things that I, I've always looked for is someone who's w worked on something and gotten to iterate on it. I think that's important to be able to put something out into the world, see what happens with it, and then turn that into change and, and evolving what you made. That's one thing. I always ask for, to, for them to talk me through something that they had creative control over. And I don't, like, I don't care if it's a blog, I know just something that, where they can talk through how they made what they made. Um, I mean, we've always been a very engineering focused culture, so I think people that can work, that can sit at a whiteboard with an engineer and, and understand what's possible, what's not possible, and work through a solution, um, I think that's, that's always been important. We usually, our approach to interviewing designers is, we, we usually have a panel of people and each person is there to focus on a different part of what we're looking for, and so it'll be, you'll have someone do craft, you'll have someone do a whiteboard exercise and we tend to use the same whiteboard exercises for a set of candidates so then we can then compare like how did they approach like some people just jump right to sketching an interface like other people will be like okay like let's identify who are the users that we want to design for for this problem um, I think I try and get some, at some like overall product sense that's not about Foursquare and that's not about something that they've worked on so like I'll, I'll say take a product that you use every day or every week and Imagine you work there, like what's the one thing you'd fix and how would you fix it? Why would you fix it? Um, so yeah, I think that's... Yeah, that was great. That was great. That was great.